Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. I'm going to be sharing a word, and I'm going to start out by sharing from the shortest verse in the Bible. The verse is John 11 and verse 35. And it simply says, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Those two words carry so much weight. And we must examine what caused this. On the surface, it will seem that he wept because of Lazarus. But that is so far from the truth of the matter. Let us recap for a quick moment. John 11. The Bible starts out by telling us that a friend of Jesus was sick. And he was sick unto death. The Bible says, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany. Lazarus of Bethany. Bethany, that name, Bethany, means the house of dates or the house of misery. It's a place where God gives us an opportunity to make a choice whether we are going to have the sweetness of the dates or the bitterness of misery. I'm intrigued many times when I, when I see names that have dual meanings. Because it tells us that there is a choice of what's going to happen. What this story is going to turn out to be. Now, here in Bethany, the Bible says this was the town of Mary and her sister matter and it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick Bethany was just a few miles away but here is Jesus this family is a family that cared so deeply for the Lord. They cooked for him. They housed him. Not just him, but his disciples. They cared deeply for him. So much so that the Bible says, in verse 3, says, Therefore he says, I send unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest, is sick. The one you love is sick. You will expect that the Lord Jesus Christ would make a move immediately and do something about it. But the word of God goes on and tells us, he says, then when Jesus had heard that, he, when Jesus had heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. What is it for? But for the glory of God. This situation, this problem that you are facing is for the glorification of God. But for the glory of God and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. This sickness is not unto death. He said it to the hearing of those that came 
to bring him this news, to tell him that his friend, the man that he loved, was sick. And having evaluated the situation, they believed that this sickness was unto death. But the Lord was saying, no, this sickness is not unto death. Then the word of God says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So this is a family that is loved of God. I thought if you are loved of God, problems will never, will never come your way. Challenges will never come because you're loved of God. Nothing can be further from the truth. Sometimes... Being loved of God attracts problems. But the thing is, it matters not what problems come your way. There is sufficiency in the God who loves you to get you out of the trouble. For his promise once again is that he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise. That's a commitment from God. A striking statement is revealed to us in the sixth verse. He says, When Jesus heard, therefore, that he, Lazarus, was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. In other words, he made no moves at all. He just stayed there, doing whatever it is that he was doing. As if he had not heard that Lazarus was sick. Have you ever been in a situation where you'd made your request known unto God? And it seems like nothing is happening? That the challenges are just piling up? You've talked to him about the, this financial situation. There's a foreclosure. And God, will you do something? And it seems like nothing happens. So many times we give up because what we thought we were going to receive is not what we have received. And instead of good news, things get worse and worse and worse. That is challenging. If you've ever been in a situation like that, you will understand... <laughs> How can I trust God when I don't know what he is able to do? I placed my trust completely. I served. I gave my life. I gave of my resources. I gave my tithes and my offerings. I was faithful. I never held back anything from God. Now that I need God to rebuke the devourer for my sake, he did nothing. This man came and they told Jesus how serious the situation was. And all he said, this sickness is not unto death. And sure enough, they left Jesus where he was. And he stayed there for another two days. After two days, the Lord says to his disciples, Let's go back to Judea. <laughs> Let's go back to Judea. Why? Those guys were trying to stone you the other day. Why, why, why do you want to go back there? They think that you, you're cuckoo. They think that you, you, you are a false prophet. They think... All these terrible things about you. And we're trying to stone you. Why do you want to go back to Judea? And the plot thickens. For the Lord Jesus Christ now tells them something even his disciples didn't want to hear. He tells them. I 
and there are not 12 hours in the day. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. There is no light in him. The stumbling is not because of the light outside or lack of it. It's because there's no light in him. So whether you're walking in the day or walking in the night, it is imperative that you have light inside of you because ultimately that's what's going to cause you not to stumble. What light? The light of the word of God. Having the word of God in you will cause you not to stumble. Keeping the word of God will cause you not to stumble. It is not just about hearing the word. So many hear the word, but are not doers, doers of the work. The Lord makes that statement and now he zeroes into what he is going to cause his disciples to even doubt him. For he said, after he made those statements, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. I like the fact that he said, listen, We've got 12 hours to work, to do the work. And we've got to do it while it is day. Because when there is light to do it, you don't get to stumble. He says, but when the night comes, if you don't have the light inside of you, you're going to stumble. And having told them that, he put this serious statement before them and said to them, my friend, our friend, Lazarus, sleepeth. Ah, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Don't you like how the Lord eases it in? You know, sometimes you need to ease bad news little by little. Don't just dump it and they said well if he's sleeping he's doing okay then we don't need to go you, you don't have to be the one to wake him up if the guy is sleeping hey he's got he's got Mary he's got Martha he's got his friends they can wake him up and the Lord then dropped the whole thing on them and said plainly. Guys, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> Stop jiving. Come on. Lazarus is dead. One time he's sleeping, now he's dead. Come on. What are you talking about? Lazarus is dead. We heard you saying, this sickness is not unto death. We heard the prophetic statement coming out of your mouth. This sickness is not unto death. Now you're telling us Lazarus is dead? I can see some of those disciples right there thinking, Oh my. Oh my. We gave our whole life to a crazy guy. This is a false prophet. Moses says, if you prophesy and your prophecy doesn't come to pass, you are a false prophet. And if you're a false prophet, you should be stoned. We protect this, we, we, we protected and, and hid him and got him out of Judea where they were trying to stone him. We've been propping up a false prophet.
So they said, we've given everything for this guy. We have no place to hide our faces now. Let's just go there and let them stone us. Let's, let's just go. Let's go. Let's go die. Let's go. Because uh, how am I going to go show my face to my, to my friends, to my parents, to my neighbors, and tell them that I've been wrong following this Jesus guy? Let's go die. I can't face up with those people. Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples said, let us also go that we may die with him. You see, this is that same Thomas who said, show me where the nail prints are and where he was pierced on the side. Then I will believe that he's been raised up from the dead. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Let's go and die. Now, place yourself in the place of Mary and Martha. Jesus is coming back. His journey is going to take another two days from where he was back to Bethany. And Martha hears that Jesus is in the outskirts of town. And she comes and she says to Jesus, If only you were here, my brother won't have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. I know God still answers you. I just know that if you'd just been here, my brother won't have died. You know, that may be true, but really, if you had had those servants come back, and said to you, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. And they rehearsed it to your hearing. And you step in there to tell your brother, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. And when you get there, you find out that your brother is dead. Will you be saying anything like that? I know that if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. Or are you thinking, this guy deceived us. You ate all our food, drank our drink, slept in our bed, and we got nothing out of it. Many times, We are filled with unbelief and outwardly we speak the language of faith. But on the inside, what we say and what we believe are two different things. And the first person you need to be true with is yourself. Recognize deep within you what you are afraid of and deal with it before God. It is not a good thing for you to think otherwise. But I know that even now whatever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it thee. And this particular statement she made is going to reveal the real truth.
Because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to say to her, if you believe, if you just simply believe, your brother is going to rise again. Hmm? My brother is going to rise again? Yeah. He shall rise again. Uh, okay, I, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection at the last day. Stop promising me something now. When you did not do it in the now that I expected you to do it. Now you tell, no, okay, I believe, I believe there is a heaven. But right now, I know you've screwed this up for me. Let's get real. You see, until we really get real, we will not know the power of God. Get real. Let's get to the real deal here. But too many times we're pretentious. In our relationship with God, we're pretentious. We don't need to pretend. God sees right through you. Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. The resurrection of the last day, the one who is going to do the resurrection of the last day is the one right here. I don't need to do it in the last day when I can do it now. I'm not going to push your miracle into the future when I can bring it about now. But Lord, why didn't you do it before? Because I want you to see something about me that you do not know. You know me as a God of the now when you have a real problem that can be solved now. But what about when the eggs are all scrambled? Can I unscramble it? You do not know the God who can unscramble your scrambled eggs. You, can, you don't know that God, but I want to show you that I am that God who can go beyond, far beyond the complications and turn things around. God wants to reveal a dimension of himself that we've not experienced before. You're talking about COVID-19. You're talking about all kinds of issues. And God is saying, listen, when they think they have shut you down, I am opening you up. I'm the God of the breakthrough. I'm the God who's going to show you what I can do when things have gone beyond repair. I am the mighty, glorious fixer. Mighty God, I give you praise. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, the resurrection and the life, though he were dead, Yet shall he live, not in the latter days, in this now. In this now. I don't know what faces you. But he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, he is. And whosoever leave it and believe it in me shall never die. He that believeth in me shall never die. <sighs> Folks, he makes a statement. He says, Believest thou this? Do you believe this? that I can bring you to the place where you never die. 
Oh, yes, Pastor, yes. We will not die spiritually. Well, is Lazarus that he's going to raise up from the dead, dead spiritually, or is he dead physically? We spiritualize everything. And God is saying to us, do you believe that I am God, the resurrection and the life, and as I live, you shall live also. Not just spiritually, but there's a transformation that's possible in this physical body. For in a twinkling of an eye, you shall be changed. And we, as God's people for centuries, have spiritualized the statement of the Lord. Well, if you believe in the Lord, you shall not die spiritually, uh, but um, physically you will die. And that's how we've always believed it. And that's how I have also believed it. Until maybe about 10, 20, yeah, close to 20 years maybe. I heard the Lord in my house, in the family room, God saying, I'm still looking for somebody to believe me not to die. Next time on Called to Victory. Is it possible tonight that the Lord weeps because of you and I? That we do not believe Him? Because there is this circumstance or that circumstance, this situation or that situation that we think has gone beyond fixing. Is it possible? To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.